What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Unplayable. We're already talking spoilers for the next set. Isn't that absolutely, crazy, <laughs> absolutely insane. We still got three months. They even announced the it's coming out July 12th. So that's literally like three months from now, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. So the set is called Shadows of the Galaxy, which we already knew. But mm-hmm. now we know for sure that it is going to be focused around the Mandalorian and around Solo, the movie and around, I don't know, would the same thing else, just like other Boba Fett and stuff like that. OK, the book of Boba Fett. Sure. I sort of view that as an extension of the Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, much. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a ton of exciting stuff and, and cards and new mechanics to cover here. They have a live stream that is going to be going up later today. I don't know if this video will be out before or after that happens, but we got the cards even before that live stream. So they might, I don't know, maybe even spoil more on that stream that we're not going to cover here. So yep. we'll see what happens. Yeah, we know wanna... there's uh, 262 cards in the set as well. Okay, so for those who care about that, ten more than last time, <laughs> which means that it it may not fit into the binder that I have. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> I might I might have to to rework some things. R I P. <laughs> Fill in some of those empty spaces. Uh, all right, so yeah, let's let's just dive right into the leaders in the confirmed two player starter set. It wasn't one hundred percent clear previously whether or not it would be a two player starter set, but it is similar to set one. And yep. uh, yeah, let's just talk about Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon, green leader. He is, looks like coming in a green blue deck. Yeah. And he is, yeah, he's obviously a leader, obviously a villain, Imperial official. And he has the action exhaust attack with a unit that costs three or less. If it's attacking a unit, it gets plus one plus zero for this attack. Seems so fine. Let, yeah. Let's just talk about the front side first. Yeah. That's interesting. It's nothing crazy, right? Kind of reminds I mean... me of Jin a little bit, right? And yeah, a little bit of gin. It's like a it's arguably a better version of IG88 because sure. you don't have to have more units. You get to use it immediately because anything you play on turn one or two are gonna be twos and threes. So it has that value going for it, is that it's not difficult to pop off. And I yeah. think the plus one is better than the minus one. I th- I agree with you. I think it it maybe lets you play like if if there are two four units at at this co- at like you know two cost two four, I feel like it lets you play a a green villain control deck in a different way where you can then like trade into your opponent's sure. units that have three health. So that is definitely attractive. You can also use it the other way, and you know a three attack health now has, uh, or sorry, a three attack unit now has four attack, yeah, and can trade into things that have four health. So. This is this is really interesting, actually. I, th- I think it, it's going to create a lot of really interesting board states and decisions for for both players. Yeah, agreed. So, and then on on his his leader side, he uh, he flips on five resources, and he has overwhelm himself. He's a three six, and each friendly unit that costs three or less gets plus one plus zero and overwhelm while attacking an enemy unit. Yep, that seems nuts. That's very cool. Like just a straight up passive ability, all your three calls have plus one and they get overwhelmed and he also has overwhelmed that like you can do some crazy things with yeah. surprise strike or any kind of buff attacks that you get to kill something and get a bunch of overwhelm damage. Like, I don't know if this is an aggro deck, but it feels like it is an aggro deck. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting because it like for, for your units to get the buff, you have to be attacking into other units. Mm-hmm. So it 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 feels it feels really cool because it's like you you want to be playing a deck where you're interacting a lot on the board with your units, but also like pushing a little bit of damage like here and there with like the overwhelm. Yeah. Uh, when when you do that, I, I think having only three attack and having overwhelm is a little weaker, but maybe that means that you want to put some like you know upgrades on this guy. And well, I kind of like the stats of three six <laughs> as a five a five flip more than sure. like say Krennic who's a two seven sure. on yeah. five flip. <laughs> I, I can't or I can't Tarkin. Too much with Tarkin that. also a, a two seven on five flip. So yeah, this feels good. Sweet. And we we mentioned that he is going to be paired with a blue deck. So let's yep. let's take a look at some of the cards that are included in his starter deck. So sure. first up, we've got of course. Phase three dark trooper. It is a three cost ground unit. It is a green villain card. It's a three three imperial droid trooper with sentinel. And when combat damage is dealt to this unit, give an experience token to this unit. Yeah, number one, this card, the 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 
the theme and the art of this card is so sick. It's so good. <laughs> These troopers are awesome. Number two, this pretty much just immediately replaces Soul Block Guard in any villain deck that's running green because totally. it's it's got the same stats, it's got Sentinel, and it's got Imperial, which is the one thing that you would want from a Soul Block Guard. So it's even better in like you Lauren decks where you're playing green stuff matters. And then it has this extra ability that when it's dealt damage, if it doesn't die, then you get to just make it beefier and beefier. So yeah. uh, I think this dude's pretty sick. Like, uh, Yeah, I, I like this card a lot. And if your opponent's trying to attack into it with something that doesn't have at least three attack, yeah, they're not attacking this. <laughs> Dude, Tarkin with this guy seems Ooh, awesome. That's so like cool. you, you give him the XP so he can swing in to something that has three damage take it out give him another xp now he's a five two like this guy's sick yeah oh yeah a really the, good the card. When combat damage is dealt happens on attack too i i hadn't even considered that yeah that's really cool so yeah you can attack into a two attack unit and it gets buffed that's mm -hmm. really sweet yeah and I, then like if you can buff this guy a little bit so that he survives he's getting the overwhelm from gideon every time he attacks too yeah and and the plus one damage so it's like he's getting the plus one from gideon he's getting the experience tokens and he's doing overwhelm damage seems good absolutely <laughs> you, you know what would be super fun is a moff gideon grand moff tarkin twin sun stack oh yeah where you're just like buffing Double up green. your cheap imperials and then flipping moff gideon and swinging for a bunch of overwhelm damage <laughs> yeah it's pretty sick lots of three costs you can throw in there that are imperials too Definitely. like good three cost imperial <laughs> cards 100 percent. all right well let's let's move on to the next card it is calculated lethality okay and it's a four cost blue villain card it's an event Defeat a non-leader unit that costs three or less for each upgrade that was on that unit. Give an experience token to a friendly unit. Okay. That's interesting. So it's the like takedown, except it's got to be three or less and not five or less HP. But it's it has an extra benefit, but it's non-leader where takedown is also including leaders. And like, there's no leaders that cost three or less. So this is almost, if this is just a removal card, it's way worse than takedown. I agree with you for sure. I, it's it's interesting because this feels like a card that would be good against this deck because yeah. if you're stacking experience tokens on those uh, the the phase three dark troopers, you kill it and then you take all the experience. <laughs> sure, sure, uh, sure. Which is it? Which is interesting. I think it's yeah. I don't think that this is a replacement for takedown, but we're gonna see in a, in a second that this you know one of the cool mechanics in the set are bounty cards. Which right. let you put experience, uh, put upgrades on your opponent's cards, and then mm -hmm. you can use this to get a little bit of more extra value on the unit that you take out. Still wondering if it's good. It makes sense because you can look at the bottom. And it says S. It makes sense. This is a starter deck card. Yeah, this is kind of similar to like I am your father, where like this card feels like it's probably going to be good into the matchup of Mandalorian and Gideon because of what Mandalorian is trying to do. Sure. So if these upgrades matter type decks start getting popularity then maybe this is a good sideboard card for that yeah yeah the the downside there is that uh, if upgrade cards become good like there are really good answers to it like this so yeah we'll have to see if there's some some protection in the set against your your upgrade Absolutely. strategies getting destroyed i, I want to go back and check if yeah okay so the phase three dark trooper is also a starter or special rarity card and i it's looking like these, all these probably are, are all yeah these are probably yeah. all starters <laughs> all right so the last card in the gideon deck that we'll talk about is gideon's light cruiser and mm -hmm. it is an eight cost space unit it's just villain you can put it in any of your villain decks it's a seven eight imperial vehicle capital ship with overwhelm and when played, if you control Moff Gideon as a leader or a unit, play a villain unit that costs three or less from your hand or discard pile for free. That's interesting. It at least hasn't win played. So there's a lot of these capital ships that cost eight, nine, ten, five trillion. And <laughs> most of them are not good if they don't have a win played ability. And that's just the way it works. Not all of them, but most of them. This one at least hasn't win played, so you can bring a, one of those troopers out from your yeah. discard pile or from your hand, which is kind of nice. So you're basically paying five for this guy. It's very reminiscent of home one because mm -hmm. home, home one lets you play a hero unit from your discard pile and it costs three less to play. So, but th this, you get to play it from your hand or your discard pile. This has overwhelm. 
uh, home one has restore and gives your other units restore. Yep. So it's definitely Kinda. similar, Sim similar to Vader as well, which mm -hmm. you know comes in and brings in another smaller unit. So you're getting eleven resources worth of value for by you know for paying eight. Mm -hmm. I think I think this is this is definitely interesting. It's a seven eight overwhelm ship, which is pretty hard to, to deal, deal with. with. Yeah, but yeah, I'm curious eight. to see. So it's like maybe it being bringing in a sentinel unit like on ground is worth playing this because I feel like the hard part about playing ships like this is you lose tempo because you're not removing anything from board or sure. something like that. So we'll see. I'm yeah. curious to see if it ends up being good or not. Yeah, I I am also curious. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, obviously the thing that it wants you to do is bring back your, your dark troopers, right? Absolutely. Uh, so the, the theme is definitely a, an A plus there, at least, and the art. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is it for the cards in the Moff Gideon starter deck. So let's let's move over to the Mandalorian. Mando. So Mando is a yellow hero leader, Mandalorian bounty hunter. When you play an upgrade, you may exhaust this leader. If you do, exhaust an enemy unit with four or less remaining HP. Okay. Let's just talk about that first. So it kind of gives value to your upgrades. It basically gives your up all your upgrades when played abilities. Yeah, of which is exhausting awesome. <laughs> something. And it can help <laughs> you exhaust whatever would trade into the unit that you just played an upgrade on. Right. If you're playing upgrades on your own unit. Sure. Does this make upgrades viable? We'll have maybe, to wait and maybe, see. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> this is like, pretty spicy. You can like really slow the game down if if you're able to exhaust one of your opponent's units like every turn for the first x turns absolutely it's going to be one of those things you have to be really smart with it like if you play an up like it's the same situation as it is right now if you play an upgrade against blue villain on turn two and then they just power the dark side and kill your big guy then it's yeah, that's like still it feels bad. really bad that's <laughs> that's not gonna ever For be sure. good if i mean so. yeah and if, if you're playing into like a control deck that's not playing a bunch of units maybe you don't even have anything to exhaust and you don't get any value out of the ability at all. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what people decide is like the ratio of upgrades to not upgrades in your deck and when you play upgrades and when you don't, I think the ability is kind of solid. Like, yeah, literally giving all of your upgrades uh, when played exhaust something seems like it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, even consider a card like snapshot reflexes, which yeah. has Mandalorian on art. So it, it's mm -hmm. good that it works with Mandalorian is like you, you get to play the upgrade and exhaust something and attack like all in yeah. one action, which feels really good. And if there are more cards like that, that come out that let you like, you know, play an upgrade and do something like when the upgrade mm -hmm. enters play, I feel like there's a lot of room for like, I don't know, quote unquote action cheating type yeah. effects. Which is Absolutely. Definitely powerful. I'm very like, so this is a Mandalorian and yellow hero. Can it stack up against the Mandalorian and yellow villain? It's going to be the question. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. <laughs> They're both the same stats, except Mando yeah, doesn't except come out till six. Boba comes out on, on five. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, let, let's, let's talk about the leader side. So it's a it flips on six. He's a four, seven. When you play an upgrade, you may exhaust an enemy unit with six or less remaining HP. That's nice. So I mean, that, at least that opens up uh, to a lot of different cards, a lot bigger units for sure. Yeah. Um, and right now, like Voltroning a leader feels like it's pretty strong sometimes, especially. Yeah, ones this that can hit have, leaders. Yeah, they can hit leaders. And then unless they have something like Vader into Death Trooper or OB with the five power guy out there, they can't just one shot your Mandalorian when you flip them out. So being able to throw upgrades on them feels like it can be pretty strong. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I think it's a cool ability. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I like Mandalorian thematically, so I want him to be good. Yeah, same. I it, it feel like I feel like they nailed the theme in terms of like it wants you to play upgrades and like he gets better and sort of encourages you to just like suit him up. Dave, mm -hmm. David's going to love this leader because he's going to want to just Voltron uh, every single leader in the game. And this one obviously really wants <laughs> you to do it. <laughs> yep. All right. So let's uh, let's talk about the cards that are in the Mandalorian deck. First, we've got Wanted. Wanted. So this is the first bounty that we've seen. And bounty? What is that? Yeah. So it's a zero cost upgrade. It's just yellow. And 
it says attached unit gains bounty ready to friendly resources Ooh. And it gives it plus zero plus zero so the idea is that you play this on your opponent's unit and then when you defeat or capture your opponent's unit i, I assume we'll get to what capture is a little bit later you get to ready to friendly resources that's kind of spicy. Uh, so, it's kind of like giving you Boba Fett's ability almost in a yeah, way, right? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's actually awesome. The callback there. <laughs> <laughs> so now Mandalorian is Boba Fett. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I think this yeah. is a cool. I mean, it's zero cost and lets you ready to resources. Like, what is the card disadvantage going to be there? I don't know, but I think that if you can get spiky turns, like we see it's already powerful in Boba Fett. So yeah. if you can get spiky turns like that in other heroes that are playing yellow, that seems good. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, and it, it synergizes obviously really well with what Mandalorian wants to do. Like you, you play this, you get to exhaust a unit and you get to set up a later turn where you get to, you know, remove it and ready yeah. your two resources. That all feels, feels very powerful. One, now one we... interesting thing that I'm now noticing is that it says when this unit is defeated or captured, so I wonder if a f if like bounties become popular, effects that you play that return your units to your hand might get better because I think mm. they wouldn't get the bounty then. Like pirated starship and stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm curious to see like if we do get a Boba Fett legendary style card, but for hero so that your Bo like your Mando can exhaust something and then it gets benefits from mm. attacking an exhausted unit. That could mm -hmm. be really sick. That would be really sick. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Next up. We are going to talk about the Mandalorian's rifle. Here we go. It's a starter rarity card or special rarity card. Costs three. It's an upgrade. It's, it's a hero just upgrade. White. Yeah, just yeah. a hero upgrade. So, I mean, I assume this wants to be on the Mandalorian, but any hero could play it. Attached to a friendly non-vehicle unit. When played, if attached unit is the Mandalorian, he captures an exhausted enemy non-leader unit. So that's pretty sweet. And what the reminder text mean? on captured. Yeah, put the captured card face down underneath him until he leaves play so you, nice. you you capture the card on your side and then when you leave play you get your unit back basically didn't they have something similar to this in keyforge wasn't capture the same remember. kind of thing oh no capturing in keyforge was capturing the amber. Uh, amber from your opponent's pool and putting it on your character oh, but right. when they die they get it back it's kind of the same thing it's, it's similar for sure not points just with units units yeah yeah that's cool doesn't yeah, do give any extra this? health yeah a that, three that's a little that... rough for three but it lets you remove a non-leader unit, any non-leader unit, temporarily. Seems like, good. Obviously, you want to play this on Mando when he is flipped because uh, I think you can order it so that you exhaust the unit and then you can take, you can capture whatever you exhausted with this card. Right. And yep. the, the, the thematic sort of like thing there is, is really cool. Reminds yeah. me of, of some of the interactions in like the Arkham Horror card game where like cards that are meant to be together like work really well together. Mm -hmm. and creates sort of that narrative which i think is really cool yeah i'm curious to see if there's a way to like deal with two units with this like a turn where you can exhaust two things and then play or while you play this i can't think of a way to do that though hmm. yeah i don't know maybe mm. ma we'll maybe, figure it out maybe it'll come all right moving on to the next card we've got razor crest and razor crest is also a special rarity card it is a four cost space unit it's blue hero it's a 3-4 Mandalorian vehicle transport with Restore 2. And when played, you may return an upgrade from your discard pile to your hand. Dude, I'm looking at this card. I want to see what it looks like in hyperspace. Yes. With like the blue, the blue clouds and yep, the lasers, lasers going off the sides. Off. Yep. <laughs> I bet it looks good. I already need it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the saddest thing about this card is that as of now, we don't know if the special rarity cards are going to be hyperfoil. Yeah. So yeah, that's a rip. I'm going to be real sad if they don't make a I also really like card. the way the Mandalorian looks and not being able to get a Mando showcase feels bad. Yeah. We're at FFG. Give us those uh, starter deck showcase Showcases. leaders, please. Let's go. <laughs> this card seems so, really good. Four cost, three, four for space seems about on par. Restores two, though, which is a lot, a lot of stability there or yeah. stabilizing if you're trying to go late game. And you can return it, gives you card advantage. Seems fine. Like, compare this to the. The system patrol craft, like, yeah, that has Sentinel, but this, like, imagine ECLing this into your opponent's, you know, like red three or something like mm -hmm. that. You, it's, it's like, uh, like Star Viper, but, but lives. 
Well, I, I guess it already lives, but yeah. Like if, if you if you're hitting your opponent's three attack space unit, mm -hmm. this survives and restores two, and threatens to keep restoring two, and brings back an upgrade that, but you know, hopefully is relevant. Oh, I wonder if cards like this make like snapshot better, where it's like mm. you get to play. Like you don't care if you're losing the the card advantage from playing an upgrade on something because just... it lets you immediately attack with it, so you're not risking putting it on there and then immediately dying so you get to use the upgrade if it dies you can just grab it back with this play it on something else like that seems kind of good yeah I, I i agree i think that it some, sometimes feels like card advantage in this game is a little weird but i think a card like this where you're you're getting a specific card back from your discard pile you you know it's going to be whatever card you need to fit that situation and this obviously wants to go into a deck where you're playing upgrades and, and bounties probably we've already seen one bounty that costs zero so it's easy on you know like your four resource turn to play this grab your bounty mm -hmm. that you had already spent and then play it again so that is definitely cool yep i like it all right and then last but certainly not least we've got grogu and Grogu is also a special rarity card. He is a two cost ground unit, yellow hero, a zero five force unit with the subtitle irresistible <laughs> and uh, action exhaust to exhaust an enemy unit. Any enemy. Got unit. him right here with me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can make him do the face, do, do the actual same pose. He's doing it. He doesn't look as uh, sad is, as puppy like eyes oddly realistic dude it looks just that like looks exactly the like it what the heck <laughs> it's so good <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah i think this card's super good i talked about it in discord but it's a two cost force unit that has five hp so it's going to stick around and it enables a lot of force traded needed cards like force throw uh what's the other one Do you have a jedi lightsaber on him but it, it binds all things <laughs> The forces with me, all that kind of stuff. And the benefit is he gets to exhaust something. So, like, if you're going first, you play this dude down, your opponent plays their one drop, you get to just immediately tap their one drop because you're not using it to attack anyway. Uh, and it just lets you help delay the game, plus enables all those force traded. Yeah, this cards. seems like a, a pretty good control card because if your opponent wants to deal with it, they got to sink five damage into it. And otherwise, it's just going to be exhausting one of their units every single turn for the entire game. Yeah, seems good. Seems so, really good. That's I like cool. it. Um, I am like, there's not a lot of force stuff in yellow. So it does feel like it's going to be relying on whatever other color you pair it with. Sure. And right yep. now, I don't think hero green doesn't have anything force related. Mm -mm. So if you're playing green Mando, then like, is this still good? Maybe, but it's not for the force trait. Yep, totally. But if there is some kind of yellow red deck that you could put this in, I think force throw alone is worth it. And this isn't getting removed anytime soon. Yeah. Gro <laughs> and Grogu agrees. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have like force choke in hero. So yeah, I want to know what other force stuff they drop. Like if they drop some more force stuff. Oh, we've got to get some of this set. Yeah. And then you have Ezra plus Grogu and hero yellow. So you at least have a couple force units there. Yeah. Ezra is really strong. Mm -hmm. He just hasn't had a chance to shine in the meta yet, but I think Ezra is really strong. Yeah, I I put Ezra in all of my yellow hero decks because I he's just so good. And we had a game the other day where you literally won the game because of the the card that you yeah. you got off the top <laughs> with Ezra, and that's like such a fun uh, part of the game. Yeah, super high rolly. <laughs> so yeah, definitely looking more forward to more force yellow stuff in this game. They are dropping some artwork. I don't know if you want to show that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got Darth Maul or Maul. We don't know. He's got a single light ended lightsaber. Yeah, but, but he it, also... it is the normal lightsaber. It, like it is his original lightsaber, it looks like. Yeah, and he doesn't look like uh, Rebels Maul. He no. doesn't have the Rebels lightsaber and his outfit looks like Darth Maul. Yeah. So maybe it's he could be one of those cards that are out of uh out of setting, out of the time like period, Mace sure. Windu. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of feel like Maul is going to be the uh, the Crimson Dawn like end of Solo Maul, just be, just given like the themes. Of but the set, even at but... the end of Solo, oh, he, he does, has he the has lightsaber the curve that lightsaber, has he? the the curve yeah, on it. Yeah. The Inquisitor's lightsaber. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it is just like 
an older version of them all. Or maybe it's the or wrong lightsaber. Like they the, might like have the Wendy wrong lightsaber. <laughs> yep. I was about to say the exact same thing. It's coach. always a possibility. <laughs> um, but we also have Dr. Aphra and Cad Bane, both which are both very fan much favorite in-theme. characters. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Love both I of think those. I, I think Cad Bane is sick. Yeah, especially that after art is so yeah, after uh Bo- Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Cad Bane does. I can't wait to see what Dr. Aphra does. Can't wait to see what Darth Maul does. I'm so pumped for this set. I think like the 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 Shadows of the Galaxy theme that they've set up here is super exciting. Mm-hmm. And we won't have to wait long to to learn nope. more about it. Nope. Yeah, I'm stoked. Well, I think that's it for what we know about Shadows of the Galaxy at the moment. Let us know in the comments what you are most excited about. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye. Bye.